Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to this video where I'm going to be discussing the upcoming album from Paul called Egypt Station. The album is due to come out officially this Friday coming September the 7th, but I was very lucky due to my friend Elliot. He got me a copy of this that he found earlier, so almost a week early I got it about 20 hours ago. And I've listened to the album completely now four times to try to get myself familiar enough to really come on here and make a first impressions video. And I want to say that from the beginning, folks. This is not what I'm going to consider my official review, my last word on the album. This is just early thoughts, first reaction kind of thing. You know, if you look at my channel, you see I make solo Beatle album reviews. And I do that by taking each song and rating each song individually on a scale from 1 to 10. And then as uh, the review goes on at the end, I total that amount, do an average and so on to get a rating. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to tell you my thoughts as they stand right now hearing this album four times. Okay, this is Paul's 25th album, I, I think, if, if I got the numbers right. And uh, I'm going to show you it's on CD. It's going to be coming out on vinyl as well. A whole, whole bunch of options for how you want to get it on vinyl. This is not, by the way, I should say, the Target exclusive. This is not that. Uh, Target is going to have a, an exclusive, which I've pre-ordered. The exclusive is going to have two bonus tracks. It will have 18 tracks. This one is the standard CD with 16 tracks. So that's the one I'm talking about today. Now, it has this elastic red band on here that I'm going to take off. And it's what it is called a, a concertina uh, edition which is like an accordion, you know? So it opens up like that here, digipacks. I'm a fan of jewel cases myself, but thankfully we got lyrics in here, and I've been studying those lyrics as best I can in the last 20 hours, <laughs> listening to this here and there to try to get a real feel for, you know, the song's content and what, it's a, what the songs are about and so forth. Um, Egypt Station is the name of a, a painting that Paul did. And that's the reason for the title. Now, when, when I opened up the inside, this was inside too. This is where the CD is housed. This also was sealed, by the way. This was individually wrapped, as was the outer packaging, of course. And I'll show you the CD, what it looks like for those who are interested in such details. There we have it. Egypt Station on CD. Now, as I say, there's 16 tracks on this version, okay? And two of the 16 tracks are really musical segues or interludes. One of them is called Opening Station. Then later on you have one called, uh, and I'm referring to my notes here, so bear with me there. I took notes for this. Station 2 is another one. They're 40-something they're seconds each, 47 seconds or so around there. So those, I don't know if you call them proper songs, but we're going to count them as songs, all right? So uh, as I say, this is just going to be an initial thing where it's not really my official review this is just what i think of it just upon first impressions and the official review will come down the pike later so please don't hold me to this being my forever thought on this this is just the the beginning now if, let's put it this way if i had played this album only one time with my first reaction it wouldn't be very good uh, i'll tell you it took me the four listens to really gain an appreciation for some of these tracks uh, although the three songs that have been out there that uh, have been making the rounds, those three songs, I've come to like them for what they are. And uh, in particular, I'll talk about one that I really have come to really like out of the three. Um, let me see now. The, uh, so so this, is just, this is just, as I say, early thoughts. The opening track is uh, called Opening Station. Like I said, 40 some odd seconds. Very nice. Uh, it's very Sgt. Pepper-like. It's funny because it opens up with what sounds like a crowd. It makes you think of the Sgt. Pepper's album by the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. And it's a vocal choral that's very, very nice um, and uh, gets you in the mood of something special. And I got to say, the, the first proper track here is I Don't Know, which was kind of the first real single. It's a double A side with Come On To Me. I Don't Know is, is, is a piano ballad which I didn't really think that much of when it first came out by itself on the internet, but now I really like it, and uh, I think it's one of the best of the songs on the album. 
And what really tickled my fancy about this is I like the way it's being used. Paul uses it to open up the album. I don't know is the kind of slow piano ballad that you would expect to be maybe the end of the album or the end of side one on vinyl or something like that. Um, kind of like Only Love Remains was or something like that from Press to Play. But uh, I like that, the, that it was chosen to open the album officially. It's very cool to hear that kind of opening, a slow and uh, melodic and piano to start the album proper. I like the part in the song uh, where the melody of the song where Paul sings the line, but it's all right, sleep tight. That part that some of you will know if you've heard the song. I really like that part. That really speaks to me. I just love the feel of that melody. And um, I like the song. Now, after that, we come to what's, I guess, track three, really. Um, it's Come On To Me, which is now my favorite song on the album. And it's hard to believe that when it first came out and released to the Internet uh, a few weeks ago, I thought, what is this, you know? It shows you the power of listening to some songs over and over. Now, that doesn't happen for everybody. It doesn't happen for every song. Uh, God knows we don't listen to songs and like them all, no matter how much we hear them. Um, but this particular song really has grabbed me. It, I love the drums in this song, the the heavy, hard drum, drums that hit really powerfully. Um, it's my favorite song on the album, which is no surprise. I like singles. I like hits. It, it To me, it was a good choice for a single. Uh, the horns are done by the Muscle Shoals horns. On here, the horns really add to it. Uh, I have a lot of fun with this song. I've really come to enjoy it. So Come On To Me is my favorite track at this time. Okay. Then we got uh, the fourth track on here. It's called Happy With You, which at the time of my first listening was the first fresh song that I hadn't heard yet from this. And I really thought it was a good song. I think it is a good song. I enjoy it. Love the melody. Uh, the melody, very nice, soft sounding kind of like uh, tune. But what I like about it is, besides the melody, it's amazing. The lyrics in here are so powerful from Paul. And I can't believe that Paul actually admitted to all this and said it. Some of the lyrics that I've jotted down are, I sat around all day. I used to get stoned. I liked to get wasted, but these days I don't. And then he says, also says he used to drink too much and he used to forget to come home. Says he even lied to his doctor, but now he don't. And this kind of thing. So that's the, he says basically the idea of the song is that I'm happy with you now. But to hear him really come come out with all that stuff was really uh, something I applaud, you know, Paul being that revealing. So uh, that, along with the nice, e easygoing melody, is, is is a good song. I enjoy that. So, I've, I, by the way, as I'm going on here, I'm finding out that this is an album for me that starts strong. And I like the sequencing here. As I said, I like the opening station that goes into the piano ballad, I don't know. Then the heavy hitting rock, I come on to me then happy with you. The sequencing at the beginning is very good. And as I was also saying, uh, so, you know, sometimes it takes a lot of time to appreciate th these kinds of things. A lot of these hit me right away as a good sequencing. It didn't take time for me to appreciate it. Uh, and it goes right into the next track, which is number five. It's called Who Cares? And Who Cares is a more up-tempo kind of heavier rocker, if you will. You know, Paul doesn't rock that hard here, but this is more up-tempo. And it's about people who uh, treat you badly. And it's got lines on there like, uh, who cares what the idiots say? And, you know, did you ever get hurt by the words people say and the things that they do when they're picking on you? So all you trolls out there could take, uh, listen, then take notice of this, okay? But, uh, you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's him basically saying, who cares what the idiots say? And I agree, I concur. I don't care and Paul doesn't care. And it's really refreshing uh, to hear him sing that heavy up-tempo rocker uh now we're into five songs and this album is starting strong for me number six is the controversial track i made a video on it everybody's made a video on it it's a song called fu you uh it's f-u-h uh y-o-u um i now think this is a decent song it's i'm not gonna call it a good song i don't think it's good i think it's decent it's decent within the context of the album you know, the controversy is that, and the lyrics are here for everybody to read. You know, the lyrics plainly say that the main line that Paul sings is, I just want it for you. But because he says, I just want it for you really fast, it sounds like he's saying he wants to do the F word. And I think that was calculated by Paul. 
and also, um, and I forget the man's name, I'm sorry, it's the only song for you on the album, by the way, that was uh, co-written, Paul wrote all the songs on here, except for for you, which was co-written with Ryan Tedder, who also produced, and it's obvious it was an attempt to try to cash in on today's sound, and, uh, you know, people have said to me, you know, you're contradicting yourself, Joe, you always say you don't like today's music, and yet here you are giving this a free pass, why, because it's Paul? Well, in a way, because to me, even it doesn't it sounds better than anything I hear today, so it doesn't sound that much like today to me. And the fact that it's got Paul McCartney on there with Paul's voice and doing his like do things like that, naturally, of course, I'm going to like it because it's got Paul putting his uh, stamp on it. So maybe it's a new sound, modern sound, but yet Paul is putting his personal mark on it. So I've come to like for you enough, and he's singing. I just want it for you. You know, uh, so that's enough of that. You know, you can, you can decide yourself. Even if you think it, you think that it's bad to, that he did this song, there's a whole bunch of tracks on here. And within the context of all 16 of these tracks, the song comes and goes and nobody really thinks anything of it. Now, the next song, number seven, a new song, the first time hearing it is called Confidant. Uh, it's a song that really talks about a former friend or even a, a, a former romance. But now I guess... Paul doesn't think too much of this person. And it's catchy. The, the line that, the main line that says, you used to be my confidant, I find a very catchy melody to that line. So I like that part of it. This is a song that didn't hit me on the first or second listen, but now after four listens, it's it's growing on me. Confidant, I don't know who it's about. Is it about his ex-wife, Heather? Is it about some friend that we don't know? Who is it about? Um... But it's growing on me now, Confidant. So now we've got, we've got like seven tracks that I can really listen to straight through, and this is going good. Um, now we have track number eight. It's a track called People Want Peace. And right away, I thought of other peace songs that uh, Paul has, like Pipes of Peace, off the self-titled album of that name. And also Peace in the Neighborhood, off the underrated album Off the Ground, which I, I love that album. Um, but he's done this already. He's he, he's talked about peace a lot uh, in the titles. Peace of this, peace of that. Now he's talking about people want peace. But I got to tell you, in spite of myself and in spite of my reservations and over-familiarity with that, I found out that I actually, uh, en I enjoy the way he sings that line. People, I can sing it, but I don't want to make you all go deaf. You know, people want peace, the, the, the line. I like that way he sings the title. Um, but it's nothing really uh, fantastic. But it's okay. Now we go to number nine. It's it's called uh, Hand in Hand. Uh, it's a lovely song. Well, my girlfriend was listening to with it, listening to me at the same time with it, and she said that she thought it sounded like a wedding song, the kind of songs you would expect they're going to start doing at weddings one day. And that could be, but I don't know how anybody's going to know this song. I don't think this is. I doubt this album's going to get out there as to that extent that people are going to be that familiar with it. Too bad. But uh, it, it's a, it's going to take a little more time for me, but it's okay. Uh, it, it is, it's a lovely song. I can give it that. So it's okay. Now we, I can listen to these nine songs straight through. Uh, up to this point, I'm really thinking the album's pretty good. Not anything great. Just pretty good. But then there's a song called Dominoes, which I'm not sold on it yet, folks. A lot of people have been saying that Dominoes is one of the best songs on the album. And some reviews I've read even have said it's classic McCartney. It's the kind of McCartney song in the future that's going to be considered a classic from Paul. As I say, not to be too redundant, I don't see it yet. So as of now, Domino's doesn't affect me in any way. Number 11 is a song called Back in Brazil. It's in the running for my least favorite song on the album. I will say one thing for it. It's very experimental musically. It goes in different places, different directions. So it's interesting from from an experimental music thing, but it's not grabbing me yet. It might be my least favorite track. And there's a, a part where they say, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Ichiban or Ichiban part that is, is really annoying, the way they keep saying that over and over again. You'll know what I mean when you hear the track. That part really bugs me. Don't really care for this song. Uh, then there's another weak track right after that to me called Do It Now. It's not terrible, but it's it, it's very it's weak. It doesn't really stand out. The message is another message that's kind of been repeated by Paul. Make this moment count. You know, uh, do it now. Kind of like the song from Flowers in the Dirt called This One, you know. 
There couldn't be a better moment than this one. Uh, that's the kind of um, idea behind it. Kind of like even the song Here Today that he did off Tug of War for John Lennon when he passed. Uh, you know, uh, make sure you use this moment. Do it now. Don't waste any time. While the vision is still clear, you know, tell people your feelings. Or, I guess, you know, express yourself. But it's a weak track. I like, I like the... It's growing on me a little bit. I like the sentiment more than the actual music. You know, I don't like the tune so much. I like the idea behind it better. Then we got number 13, a song called Caesar Rock. Caesar Rock. Paul uses his tough voice on there. I compare it to something like what he did with the song Beatles classic, She's a Woman. Not, not quite like that, but Paul puts his rock voice on there. And it, right now, that song is like so-so for me. It's growing on me too. But right now, it's it's just like so-so. But you can see from a while back now, it's the album does start strong for me. And the worst thing you want to hear is that an album kind of goes downhill for you. For me, it goes downhill. Might not for you. Some critics don't think so from what I've read. But for me, it's going down. Uh, then we have a song here called, uh, everybody's talking about, Despite Repeated Warnings. Despite repeated warnings is Paul making a political uh, stab at the President of the United States, I believe. I think that's what's going on in it. I think that's what the word is out on the street. And it's done in such a way that it's kind of like it's something more vague and subtle. That it, it could be, it could pertain to almost anyone. Um, but I don't like the song. I don't think anything of the tune. I don't think anything of the words. And uh, I, there's a part in here that really drives me nuts. Uh, it's a part when he repeats, yes, we can do it, yes, we can do it, yes, we can do it, and over and over again. And I can't stand in songs when people repeat that, like, seemingly because they don't know what else to say. Yes, we can do it, we can do it, do it now, do it now. Yes, we can do it, do it now. And there's even a part, yes, we can do it, whoa, whoa. Yes, we can do it, whoa, whoa. You know, shades of my love, you know. <laughs> But uh, I don't like the song. Despite repeated warnings, along with Back in Brazil, so far, at this point, my two least favorite tracks. Then we go into number 15, which is Station 2. I was a little disappointed because um, I like the sound of it. It's like the first opening bit. It has that vocal choral thing again, which is a nice sound. But I say I'm disappointed because I thought he was going to be doing that interlude more often. I didn't know he was only going to do it once, then late in the album. As it stands now, it reminds me of the Sgt. Pepper reprise from Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. You know, it's kind of like you had the opening, with, with, and now you have it again right at the end of the album. So it's, again, it's a 40-something second of interesting uh, vocal choral. The last track on this particular version of the CD uh, has, has a medley here, three numbers, uh, one of them called Hunt You Down, Then Naked, and the last one, Sea Link. Funny, Sea Link reminds me of Cufflink that was on London Town from 1978, the title anyway. Uh, I don't really care for this last thing except for the end, the very end. The, the, the song I guess that's called Sea Link has a really interesting sounding guitar bit at the end and it's what officially closes the whole album. So um, although I don't care for the beginning of this and the middle, the end part really grabs me. So. Those are my uh, initial early thoughts on Paul's Egypt Station um, upon four listens. And right now, um, I would say that uh, it's just a okay album. I don't think it's a terrible album. I don't think it's a bad album. I don't think it's a great album. Uh, I don't know how it's going to affect me as I go on. But uh, I think when I rate Paul's albums... This is going to be one of those albums that's going to fall in the middle. It's not going to fall on the bottom, and it's not going to fall anywhere near the top 10, or maybe 15. It's going to be nowhere like that. Probably going to be in the middle. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm curious to hear everybody else's thoughts as they listen. Not a, not a terrible album, but I'll be honest with you, you know, although some of the songs are, are, are appealing to me, and some right now not so much, uh, I don't think there's anything on here that's really great. Um, I, you know, I don't know and come on to me. Uh, happy with you. Maybe being the best right now. Who, who's to say at this early notice? So I'm not going to rank this on a scale of 1 to 10 yet. I'll leave me to listen to it some more. Although right now, I'll tell you the truth. I'm kind of Egypt stationed out 
for now. I listen to it a lot. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an album I go back to a lot. I mean, time will tell. I'm still not a big fan of Paul's Press to Play. I'm not a fan of Paul's Driving Rain. Those are two of his studio albums that just never grew on me. Uh, this one, as I say, I think it's better than those albums. But it's not as good as Paul's last album, New, from 2013, five years ago. I think New was a much, much better album. But this is not by any means what I call a disaster, for those who are worried about that. Okay? It's, it's okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching.